Androgelskis and I live in San Rafael. I, I've been writing 20 years and I got into it because I moved to the city and I just had a Vespa scooter and I wanted to go faster. Like I took that thing all over the city. It was like 50 cc's. I took like dudes like bigger than me on the back. I would just take whoever and it was just so fun and it was like barely making it up the hills and trucking along. Always fun and I crashed a ton of times on it, which was probably for the best because I learned a lot. And then eventually one of my boyfriends was like, do you want to learn to ride a motorcycle? We're in the Presidio with like a vintage Honda and like his buddy and his girlfriend and I was like sure and so like as soon as I got on it I got it right away next week I bought a 1969 350 scrambler and just like started like going across the bridge and like going up into the headlands and just kind of exploring like I didn't know anybody that rode I just was like happy to get out of the city and I think the thing that's like still the same now is that like when I ride like that feeling of like feeling your smallness, like when you go up on the PCH is like still the same, like that's still why I do it. Like there's art and there's community and I love those aspects of it, but like feeling, feeling my smallness really still hits. Um, probably about the same amount of time. I like moved out here from Ohio. I had like a full ride scholarship in journalism in Ohio. And then I was hanging out with like people that were making art and I was just too scared to do it in high school. And so when I was in college, I was just like, I'm gonna do that. And I switched my major to art therapy. And it's a lot of psychology. And I was just like, I don't wanna be a therapist. Like I wanna be an artist. And so I finished my second year, drove across the country, and went to state and got a double major in painting and textiles. And right out of graduation, I started working for a mural painting company and like was working at schools, like in the Outer Sunset and North Beach. And um, eventually just started my own company because the woman that was running that one moved and I got all her referrals. And I think I just kept getting jobs. Like people were like, oh, she's a painter. Like that's cool. Like, like out in the sunset like the pizza place and the burger place and like people's homes and so like for me that's like my hood like it's like where I know everybody and it feels it feels like really cool to like see murals that I did like 15 years ago still there but um, now I'm just like doing it on like so many different ways like helmets and tanks and you know art shows and galleries, it just, it feels like I can't help but to do it. Like I'm compelled to paint, like I have to do it. I think the first tank I painted was 2013. Uh, my boyfriend and I at the time lived up on the coast in the Sea Ranch and I bought my first Harley and it was a chopper. It wasn't like a hard tail, but the frame was chopped somehow and it was so powerful. It was more powerful than any other bike I'd ever ridden. And so we were kind of like, let's fuck with it. Like, I remember thinking this is like trying to paint with nail polish because it wasn't acrylic, it wasn't oil, which is what I was used to painting with, like murals and on canvas. And it would like take itself off. Like I'd be painting with it and it would like look like it dried, but just like with nail polish, if you like paint too many layers, it will start taking itself off. So there was definitely a learning curve but mostly what happened is that once I got it and cleared it, I, it was received really well and I started getting feedback. I did it for me, but it was really cool that like people were stoked on it. And then my friends just started asking me to paint their tanks and that was great practice. And I think that's like kind of what a tattooer must feel like when you, your friends let you like practice on them when they're new. Like that's how it felt for me when I was painting tanks because I was just like, I'm gonna do my best, I'm still learning, but they were stoked. And so it was kind of just like a green light, like every time, just like, all right, keep, you're, doing, you're doing the right thing, like keep doing it. And like, it just evolved into like people asking me to make art and that I, I'm just so grateful and so lucky 
the like what I'm doing is like people want it, you know? Like I also feel like it's so important, like I'm just gonna paint what I know. Like there are so many awesome painters out there that do pinstriping and like the flames and I don't know how to do that. Like I could like pulling a straight line to me seems maddening. Like I'm not not into that. No, like I respect it and I think it's cool. I just I just want to do something that's like not really typical of the motorcycle um, sort of like iconography, you know? Like I do love nods to it because it's a classic and it's part of like the heritage of choppers and motorcycles in general, but there's so much room for everybody to do whatever the fuck they want. Like everybody can do everything. Like there's just no limits, so why not? Do you know the crackers? Yeah. yeah. They're, they're kind of like trashy crackers, but like they're so good. It's there's no like real reason. Like it sort of just stuck. Like when I got my first iPhone, uh, my friends were like, "You got to put we got to download Instagram." And I was like, "All right." And we're in the garage at my buddy's garage in the city and we're like drinking and working on bikes and doing whatever. And they're like, "Your name should be uh, Nikilla, because I used to skate roller derby, and my skate name was La Femme Nikilla. And like we typed it in, and they're like, "Oh, it's taken already!" I'm like shit. So they made it Nikilla's AK47, because that was my skate number. And I kept it for a while, and I just remember like a couple months in, I was like, "It's kind of aggressive." Like I don't identify with that anymore, or like at all. And so I think I had a couple glasses of wine one night and I was like, what is the opposite of that? And I was like, something silly, like chicken and a biscuit. And it was available. And now, like, my Instagram was just personal back then and like over that last decade, it's just, like I started making art and people started recognizing that handle. And so I was like, I, I guess I'll just make it my like art name. People are like coming up to me and be like, what's up chicken? Hey chicken, or like, what's up biscuits? And I'm like, okay, like I'll go with it. So it's just like a silly, fun thing. Uh, I don't really name bikes, but I've just kind of been calling it like the peaches and cream bike because that's kind of the inspiration, part of the inspiration. Like I wanted a chopper so bad like two years ago i was just like i have a, like a great new modern sportster i just want like something fucking cool and i put like i bought a bunch of raffle tickets for this one like honda chopper or yamaha is a yamaha chopper and i was like for sure like trying like thought i would win it because i was willing it to happen and i didn't win it so then i was like i guess i'm just gonna build one and that was the beginning of 2021 and I wanted something that was like the opposite of what I'd been writing or trying to like express in the past, like all really tough bikes, black or just like ratted out. And I wanted like to lean more into my femininity and just like make a bike that was really cute and tough at the same time. And that peach color feels like my heart color, like that's the color that I want to express. Like when I'm riding, like I don't feel like I need to be tough. I just want it to be pretty and I want it to be fun. And so over the course of like building it and working with a couple different people, like my main uh, focus was what the tank was gonna look like. And I think that was the hardest thing because I had so many ideas where they just wanted like to put it all on there and I'd done that with like other tanks on other bikes and so I had to keep like uh keep like reminding myself to keep it simple you know it's like just make it simple like and what's on it now is like the sort of botanical illustration and uh I also kind of wanted like a little bit of like Pizzazz. So I like doing the metal flake for the, the sort of cream shape 
looks kind of like magic gasoline to me in a way. And the whole sort of layout of it just works on that little wassail tank. So even now, even that whole process, as I'm going through it, I'm just like, pull back, like don't do too much. Cause it's so easy to like, want to do all the little things like valve caps and like cool custom seats and like, I don't know, every bell and whistle, but I don't want like a silly bike. Like I just wanted to like keep it about the color and the tank really. And like the choices on that bike were all pretty classic to me, you know, just like six overs, like a, like a king and queen, um, like just regular, you know, ch chopper handlebars and spokes and an Avon Speedmaster, just like, you know, swept up pipes, nothing crazy, just kind of simple. So the like other main things about it that I really wanted were like kind of Easter eggs. So on the front, there's like, I wanted to paint like a little um, scratch and sniff peach sticker, like from like old school, like those stickers. So I just painted one on there. And then um, I hit up Frank who runs Vicious Cycles. He makes those resin gas caps and like shifter knobs. And I was like, hey man, can we do like gummies, you know, like peach rings? And he's like, well, we've done gummy bears and they've melted. And, like he's like, I'll give it a shot. And so we did and it turned out like great. So there's like, like it feels almost like there's too much now, but like pulling back and like looking at it as though I haven't like seen it yet. I'm like, all right, it's still pretty like subtle, but I mean, I don't know, maybe it's not, it's like still a peach bike. 